an invitation came to be a part of a group. So JL remembers this group being made up of mostly young women. And this group, led by Mike, would be together studying the mystics. Or even more specifically, bridal mysticism. A mystic is someone who claims to obtain transcendence or unity with God. And this can, for example, lead to purported profound knowledge and states of spiritual ecstasy. And the spiritual practices of your average Christian mystic, that would maybe involve things like silent and contemplative prayer, slow meditative reading of sacred texts. It can also involve practices that focus on self-discipline and abstinence, like long periods of solitude and fasting. And that's what a mystic is. That's what mystics are known for. How about the mystics? Now, they are a collection of mystics from the past who have left behind cherished texts that are considered deep and by some even dangerous. The very first book that was introduced to this group was to be Bernard of Clairvaux. And I remember very distinctly a time when Jane Doe, Mike, and I were at a restaurant having a meal just the three of us, and we had a lengthy conversation, actually, about Bernard of Clairvaux, and he was recounting a lot of things that he had studied about his life. And one of the main things that sticks out to me right now is that two different times Bernard of Clairvaux went and lived alone, not just, like, taking a vow of silence with other monks or staying in his room, like, lived alone, alone, off. And the idea being that everything of the world falls away, Everything that you get comfort from and lean into that are merely kind of like crutches in the world to sustain yourself, that you're cut off from all of that and all that's left is Jesus. And so both times that Bernard of Clairvaux came out of those encounters or times or prolonged seasons of aloneness, he came out with deep revelations and he came out with anointing to heal and all these different things and then went on, if I remember correctly, to found an order of monks. And so, you know, when you put together the fact that then Jane Doe was invited into an apartment alone so that she could enter on that journey herself, I just feel like something smells pretty fishy. I've thought a lot about the fact that the way that the mystics were introduced to us from Mike himself is that they're shark infested water. So there's this narrative that they are fearful or that they are dangerous. But then in the same moment, he's setting himself up as the one who knows how to navigate you through them, who alone has the keys for you. Like, don't do this alone. I'm the one that knows how to take you through them and help you navigate them and create a paradigm from them. And it's this isolating experience, if you will, where he's setting himself up to be the one that interprets them into your life. And I find that deeply upsetting. Not all the mystics leaned into bridal paradigms, but the ones who did like famous Roman Catholic mystics St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross, they both wrote of the possibility of a mystic marriage with God. I'm curious what he thought about himself, his special what, knowledge and ability to navigate very young people's minds through these waters whose brains aren't even developed yet. And when you see concepts in there of such deep intimacy and spiritualizing these very murky waters of intimacy of Jesus with the church and how those things can very easily be twisted to manipulate things into something more, it's very concerning. It's fascinating to me that many of these young women became the very kind of young foundation for IHOP that would start exactly two years later. 